What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another match review as Spurs beat Portsmouth 1 goal to nil at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium yesterday to advance into the fourth round of the FA Cup. We got Barry with us today. How you doing, Barry? Substitute, late substitute. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, and skip, like <laughs> so, yesterday. I mean, pulled in the, right at the last minute, got the phone call. Yeah, no. Look, it's, uh, it, we got, we did what we needed to do yesterday and that's all that matters. It wasn't pretty, but we got the result and we're into the, the hat for the next round. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, look, it was a poor game of football yesterday. Let's, uh, let's not um, make two bones about it. But in terms of the performance yesterday, um, obviously for me, Pape Matasa really stood out. I thought Harry Kane was good as well. Um, in the first half, we barely had a shot on goal and Portsmouth probably had the best chance of the game in that first half. But we did control things for the most part in the game. How, how did you read into that first half watching it here from TV? Yeah, look, it was um, it was first half. First, first half Tottenham, Tottenham, yeah. Tottenham as, it, as it was. Look, I think, um, yeah, like you said, it was um, Pape Matasar looked bright. Um, Hill, again, uh, impressed. He didn't do as much, maybe as much as what he did uh, against Palace. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was. You're right. Portsmouth had that best chance from um, um, from uh, who, who was it? Hackett. Um, that overhead kick um, that forced the push away. And, and yeah, maybe Skippy. Obviously, we were talking about it beforehand. Skippy made that challenge that it was reviewed by VAR. Um, on another day, maybe it could have it could have meant a red card. It, it was a really really rash challenge. Um, but yeah, we 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 kind of controlled the game. It wasn't a, a game that. Portsmouth ever looked like they were gonna they were gonna hurt us um, and obviously if they did then it, it would have played into our hands of playing onto the counter-attack yeah and like one one shot on target each throughout the whole game of 90 minutes I mean that is a terrible game of football and I guess from those stats Portsmouth got to be walking away from the game pretty proud of uh, the way they handled themselves through the game and limiting us to so many you know only one shot on target throughout the game yeah, look, I mean, we had 18 shots. Most of them came in the second half. Yeah. Uh, or pretty much all of them came in the second 12 half. 12 did, yeah. 12 of them did. Um, and one on target, which was the goal from Harry Kane. 72% um, possession for Spurs. So you can see why, I guess, if you didn't watch the game, people would have sat there and gone, Spurs dominated it, um, just based on the stats. But, yeah, it, it, neither team would have been... Um, would have been pleased with that. I mean, obviously you were there. The atmosphere wasn't as as no. it normally was. It was a family day. A lot. Yeah. Of, obviously, there was the tickets. There was four tickets for forty pounds, two adults, two kids. So obviously, there was a lot more people that would have not necessarily would have been there, would have been at the stadium. It was an early kickoff. The weather wasn't great. I mean, it just kind of just sums it all up from yesterday. Yeah, FA Cup third round day. I mean, all you need to do is get yourself in the name in the hat for the next round. And that's exactly what we did. And when you're talking about records and Harry Kane, now one goal away from Jimmy Greaves, equaling Jimmy Greaves' record with that North London derby just around the corner. What a goal that was, though, from Harry Kane. Nice little one-two with Ryan Sessegnon and Heath. Buried it into the top corner uh, with his right boot with a nice curling effort. It's a shame that Harry Kane couldn't um, actually just equal that record yesterday, but at least uh, maybe, maybe in the North London derby, it's going to happen. Yeah, look, I think we we saw it. Um, so yesterday, the, the interesting fact is Harry Kane scored his 265th goal the same day that mm. Jimmy Greaves did back in 1970. So that's mad to, yeah. to think that they both scored their 265th goal on the same time, 52 years apart on the same day. Um, but yeah, it would have been nice for him to equal it. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to, I think, you know, looking ahead, I think he's going to get the winner penalty and he's going to, and he's going to break the record. It'll be a 2-1 win for Spurs. It's, you know, that, that's, that's the dream. That's, that's, you know, for, we talk about Sim with his, you know, with his romance, romantics, <laughs> romantics about the FA Cup and, and, and the World Cup and everything else with the Messi Ronaldo final. That, that's what it's built for, 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 ne for next weekend. But yeah, he's, it's only a matter of time before he breaks it and it'll just be great if he could do it next week. And we talk about uh, the shots that we had on target, just one shot on target, which was that Harry Kane goal, but there were a couple of chances that weren't on target that were guilt edge chances really that brilliant cross from Hyung Min Son to find Emerson at the back post I mean you lot were celebrating it <laughs> in the studio uh, yeah. it, he, he rose really well in, uh, to get that header but it just hit the inside of the post and come out and uh, there was the other chance in there from Skippy where he really should have done better from that yeah look he was um yeah we were with me, me and Ash Matic celebrated <laughs> the way the, the way that it looked it looked like it was going right into that top corner 
And I think the Spurs fans just blew it out. So it wasn't at the last minute. <laughs> and then, yeah, Oliver Skip. Obviously, Brian Hill had the chance and it kind of got, he couldn't get it out from under his feet. Skip was through and eight yards out. He has to do better. He really does have to do better. Yeah, absolutely. And well, we, we got to talk about Papi Matasar. I mentioned him before. Uh, 115 touches throughout the game, most of any player on the pitch. 90.4% passing accuracy, 11 ball recoveries, five tackles, three interceptions, and one clearances. I mean, the guy is really starting to announce himself on the big stage for Tottenham Hotspur. When you're looking at players like Bissouma, who haven't really taken their chances yet, uh, Ben Tancourt out injured, Hoybier as well, last couple of games who haven't been that great. Papi Matasar is really coming along now isn't he yeah he is and and look it i i don't want to do what we normally do as spurs fans someone has a good game <laughs> and then we just wax lyrical about them but he has shown the last two games look he's kicked on hill hill was disappointing he, i mean he, he played well but he didn't have that that final end product like he did against palace but pape matter so every time we were looking at at the screen he was everywhere he was involved in everything of, of trying to drive the ball forward and i think that's what we've you know with benton core out injured We've missed that person that's kind of driving that. You know, we know we're missing that creative midfielder, but Pape Matasar yesterday, you know, uh, Kane got man of the match, but I mean, he was pretty much a close second. Yeah, I would have put him in first, to be honest. I mean, he was my man in the match yesterday. Although Kane did do really well dropping deep, being the hub of the team. But when you're looking at a game where we didn't create too many chances, only won the game 1 0 against a League One Portsmouth, and you're seeing the. Um, impact that Papi Matasar did have in the middle of the park. I thought he was so dominant. He's so, he's like, um, he must have like batteries strapped to the back of him. He's like a little Duracell bunny, just non-stop running, um, loads of energy and uh, does it to a high quality as well. So I'm really happy with Papi Sar. You saw it when he came on against Villa. He was the shining light in that game. You saw it when he came on against Crystal Palace as well. Really good performance. And I think he took it to a new level um, in this game, albeit against League One opposition, but Portsmouth did, uh, you know, they came to try and spoil the party and they nearly did, to be honest, with uh, us only getting that one goal and it being a really good goal at that. But Pape Matasara, I mean, how far do you think he can go? And, and for, for his role in the team this season, do you think that it's more worth it for his development to go out on loan and play consistent football? Or do you want to see him stay, stick around and, and make an impact at Spurs? Well, look, I think he's, we, again, we were saying earlier, I think he's jumped ahead of Skip and uh, Basuma now in, in behind Benson Core and, and Hoybier. And, and look, if Benson Core's back, I'd love to see us play, you know, I wouldn't be averse to seeing us play a 5-3-2 and have those three, Saar, Benson, Core and Hoybier in midfield. Um, look, it, I guess it all depends on on, on what how, how bad Benson Core's injury, if he's going to be back, you know, the form of Hoybier. We're, we're kind of light, really. I know we've got Skip, we've got Basuma, but they haven't been playing well. There's, you know, it, it just, we can't, you know, Fit. we can't just let him go out on loan and then another injury happens and then we're going to be short again so mm. I think look he's impressed the last two games and I think he's you know he I mean I'd love to see him start the North London derby because he seems like he's got the bit between his teeth um, and obviously depending on what happens with, with Ben's got obviously Hoybier is going to come straight back in um, you would have thought um, and, and yeah it'd be nice to see what he can do in a, in a big game and being yeah. put under kind of the pressure that he's maybe not had the last couple of games. Yeah, and it's high praise that coming from any Spurs fan saying you want him to play the North London derby when he's hardly had a look in uh, all season and obviously out back on a loan to Mets last season. But some other players I want to talk about, Emerson and Sessegnon. I thought Emerson did did nothing in the first half, to be honest. But second half, I thought he actually played pretty well, getting down that right-hand side and then down that left-hand side when uh, Jed Spence came on for that last 15 minutes and had that chance, like I said, at the back post. Sesson, on the other hand, I thought was poor throughout, to be honest. Um, you mentioned before, you know, hiding behind players, not taking on his man. And um, with Sesson, we've said it so many times now how... He's such a confidence player and he needs that confidence to go and take on his man, attack that fullback, keep going on it, keep getting up and down the pitch, putting good crosses in the box, getting at, le arriving late at that back post for the other wing back to, to, to find him at. And he's just not doing any of those things. No, no, he's not. And like I said yesterday, he just looked devoid of any confidence. He didn't really want to push on and take on his man. I don't know whether it, in the back of his mind still he's thinking about his hamstring mm -hmm. and that's, that's there. But it, he just needs to... It's just, just strange, you, you know, Perisic has been there and you thought that, you know, his experience and his knowledge could be, you know, put onto Sessegnon, but yeah, he's just, just really disappointed. Obviously, 
Um, Emerson, yeah, I mean, that was a shock. We were all sitting there going, oh, Emerson's coming off and, and surely. And, and then when Conte put him to the left-hand side, it yeah. was just like, I mean, that was, you know, again, it doesn't do anything for Session John's confidence because he sat there going, this guy. And, you know, you know me, I'm Emerson's biggest fan and I'll always say, come on, get off his back. And You're the only member of the Emerson Royale yeah, I fan am, club. I am, I am. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I think... Emerson even, sexual. Even, yeah, even, <laughs> even that, Session John would have been thinking... Christ, I've been I've been taken off. I thought maybe Matt Dotti would have come on the left hand side, but Emerson's going on the left hand side now, and and that wouldn't have helped his confidence. I just think, yeah, I mean, I think out of we're talking about Saar going out on loan. I think Cess needs to go out on loan and just get some game time and, and maybe build that confidence. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one with Cess because we bought him in for thirty million all those years ago in two thousand and nineteen, and we all had such high hopes for him. And every time, I mean, every time he's played. He just leaves you wanting more, doesn't he? All the time. And he had a, a bit of a period last season when we thought, all right, he's starting to kick on now, but he's reverted back to type Ryan Cessnion. Still very young, I think 22, 23 years old, Ryan Cessnion. Do you think that it's right for fans to, um, to write him off completely at the moment? Or do you think he's still a young player and um, he's still got time on his hands? I mean, look, the time and time again, we've got to... At, at what point do we sit there and say enough is enough, if that makes sense? Um... Look, I, I mean, I I know, obviously, Conte wasn't a fan of Regalon. But, I mean, Reg, could Regalon do much worse from an attacking point of view? He's probably a lot better. He, he would take people on. He would go to that byline. Defensively, obviously, OK, he's not, not, not that great. But, yeah, I think it's kind of... It, it's coming to the time where, look, is it... It's stick or twist. Obviously, a dogie's going to come come in at the end of the season. Mm. That's you know does you know he's a, a lot younger. If he's coming in and, and replacing Cess, it's kind of you know the nails kind of in the coffin there um, yeah. for him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving on to the defence. I mean, they were largely untested to be honest. I thought both, all three of them um, had a really good game. Tanganga, Sanchez, and Davis. Nothing really got past them throughout the day. And Fraser Forster, I mean, he probably could have gone to sleep for the majority of the game apart from uh, that chance in the first half. They they rarely threatened, did they? No, they didn't. And, and look, uh, obviously it was nice to see, obviously I think everyone was probably thinking that maybe Dyer would have stayed in the, in the, in the middle of that three, um, but he didn't. Um, but yeah, Tanganga, Sanchez and Davis, they were, you know, they, they were kind of reliable. They didn't, I mean, they weren't put under any pressure at all. So we, we couldn't see them kind of crumble like, you know, like Tanganga did against Chelsea in that, you know, in the Carabao Cup yeah. last season. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, it, it was, they, they did their jobs. They didn't, they didn't do anything that, that was bad. They didn't do anything that was, you know, that you sit there and go, oh my God, that was amazing. But mm. they just, they just did their jobs. And like you said, with Forster, um, yeah, he could have just put a chair up and just you know, read the paper or something. He, did, he didn't have anything else to do apart from that chance. Absolutely. And then with 15 minutes to go, um, Jed Spence comes on. Um, me and Brian were talking before the game being like, if you don't play Jed Spence in this game, what, what can that do to his confidence? Because he's seeing the likes of Pape Matasar come and, come and have a go. He's seeing the likes of Skippy having a go and Brian Hill coming on. Um, and Jed Spence, he's seeing the, the players that he's got ahead of him. All right, fair enough. Doherty's doing well at the moment. But Emerson Royale, we all know um, what form or what he's shown so far. I mean, what does he need to do to get a chance, even in an FA Cup game against League One in the third round? Look, I, I just think that it's clear that Conte didn't want him. Um, and there's also, obviously, Neil Warnock said it before around his attitude. Um, uh, but what um, we're hearing from Ali Gold today is that his attitude has been amazing since joining Spurs. Has never down tools, always puts 100% of effort into training, and he's a really good trainer. That's well, a really weird one. It, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I, I think if, obviously, we've seen the last few weeks Conte coming out with the things that he's been saying about what he needs and the project and... We're, you know, Tottenham aren't in the position. You know, is it fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or what, what? Wherever that, wherever that may lie. And I think if Conte had started him, that would, you know, we know that there's this cat and mouse game going on with Conte and the board around his new contract, and he wants to be back before he signs. And they're saying we're not going to back you unless you sign. And we go around in kind of, a, you know, the normal kind of narrative that we've had for the last twenty odd years. But I think Conte would, by with Conte starting him, it shows weakness from Conte. Um, and I think he's just going to, you know, I think Jed Spence needs to, again, like with Cess, he needs to go out on loan um, and get some game time. Look, I mean, look, he 
he played well in the FA Cup last year. We know what he did against Arsenal and and everything else. But when I watched him in the in the Championship playoff, he didn't really put his hand up. He didn't really sit there and say, "This is me. I'm in the window." Let, you know, I want to have that big move. So I don't think if he's if he's not done enough for me, and I'm not an expert compared to Conte, then maybe that's the same Conte scene. It goes, he's yes, he trains well, but. He's just not, you know, he's not at that level that Conte thinks I'm going to I'm gonna throw him in there. Mm -hmm. It's a shame because I feel like he's being used as a bit of a pawn in, um, in the tactics between Conte and Daniel Levy. And I don't think it's right to, to do that to someone of that age coming through. Um, obviously, his career has taken a bit of a halt at the moment, taken a bit of a stumble. So we need to, to sort it out because it's not right to do that to someone of that age, a brand new signing at the club um, from the championship as well. So it's it's a bit of a, a down point to Conte, in my opinion. Yeah, no, look, absolutely. I think I think you're right. He is, be, he is being used in this, it, like you said, there's a pawn in this game between Conte and the board and the new contract and everything else. Maybe, look, maybe he goes out on loan to... You know, maybe someone else in the Premier League that down the bottom of the table gets some games. Um, I mean, you know, you never know. It could be back at Forest, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and 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 seeing what. Uh, but when, yeah, it's just it is it is disappointing. But I think you know, uh, if if he's not starting yesterday's game, I think that the whole, you know, the whole Jed Spence narrative and some of the fan base saying what what does he need to do or surely he must play. I don't think he's going to play unless there's you know unless there's an injury. Um, to Emerson and Doherty and Perisic, then there's no chance I think he plays. Yeah, it's a shame. And also, in terms of loaning him out, to especially to a Premier League club, with him taking that FA Cup uh, appearance for the last 15 minutes means he's cup-tied. Yeah. So that's going to be even more difficult to, to get him out the door at, at, in on loan. Um, but we do have the draw later for the FA Cup. Four o'clock is the draw. Spurs are seven, number seven in the hat. Who do you want in the next round? I kind of just want to, you know. You want I, Oxford, right? I want Oxford. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want Oxford, yeah. Oxford to beat, Man, uh, beat Arsenal tomorrow. And, and, and yeah, Spurs, Oxford. Look, I, 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 look, I think we, we need to go on a run. I said it yesterday. We need to go deep in this competition. Look, there could be a there could be a Premier League um, Premier League scalp. I mean, you know, you don't want Man City or whoever comes out of that. I mean, I think it will be Man City that come out of the game a little bit later. But you don't want a Man City, a Man U, a, you know, a Liverpool because I think they will get past Wolves in that second game. You you know, you want to you want to try and have the you know from a romantic point of view, it would be nice to go away and did what you know. Obviously, we went was supposed to play at Marine, but we didn't, and it would be nice to kind of go there and. And maybe put pay something back to those those clubs. You know, Boreham Wood. Maybe that would be a. That's my number one, Boreham Wood, because it's so local to here, the studio, and I just love to see that Spurs in a stadium like that against a local team. It'll be nice to see. That's, yeah. that's what I, I, th see. I think. Look, whatever happens, we need to. You know, I'd like to see us. You know, be, get a bit of a favourable draw. Get through to the get through to the fifth round, then to the quarterfinals. Then you know, look, you're not gonna you're not gonna. Um, get away from the bigger teams but we, we we need to go deep i think in this competition and you know like you you and brian were saying you know the last you know we were the the leading leading holders in 1991 and look at what's happened since yeah. you know 30 32 years or whatever now it's enough is enough we you know i think i think if if someone said would you take an fa cup win and, and come in fifth i think i'd probably take that over finishing fourth interesting i mean does this the fa cup still hold the same kind of romance to you well <laughs> sim's not here we can't really talk about romance <laughs> but does it still hold the same kind of romance for you than than it did maybe back then yeah i, I think i think a lot of the clubs like like uh, like brian said about what happened with man united um and, and that year that they kind of pulled out and went and played in the World Club Championship or whatever it's called now, um, it has lost. It has lost the kind of romance, I guess, from a, I guess from a, the amount of games that they're playing and, and managing players' schedules and stuff like that. So from a, you know, managerial side and from a, you know, from a playing side, I don't. I think it's lost that. But I think, f you know, for me, like I was saying yesterday, I was there in the semi-final when Wickham Wanderers were playing Liverpool at Villa Park and it was two, you know, Liverpool scored in the 77th minute or something ridiculous. And that was, the, you know, that was it. I was at Sellers Park. We went for the, you know, it was 13-11 on penalties or something. You know, those are the types of 
days that you never forget. And yeah, I, th I think that for for you know for the fan base now that you know the younger generation they haven't really seen a an FA Cup run or you know you you see, we saw some giant killings yesterday, but that's what you want to see. You want to see. You want to have that romance. You want to wake up. You, you know the day starts and. You know, yesterday it was fantastic. The day started, 12.30 kickoffs all the way through to 8 o'clock. You know, we've got kind of similar thing today as well. So they may be trying to bring it back, but I, I think from a club point of view, I don't think it means as much as it used to. Mm, I agree. I agree. But that is your match review. Big up, Barry, for coming in on such late notice, short notice. We've got player ratings coming up next. And also, like I said before, FA Cup draw at 4 o'clock. We'll be going live for that. And uh, Spurs are pot or ball number seven in the draw. So watch out for that. We'll see you all very soon. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.